what's good, what's poppin', what it is, what it ain't, what could be, what it should be, what it would be. It's yours truly, Mr. Cam Newton the sum, Mr. Boogie the all. And I'm here to give great content for the masses and funky stuff for your asses. I have an unbelievable guest that needs no introduction. And as some people may say, hide your kids, hide your wives. Well, in this situation, we're going to hide your sons, too. Because Miss <laughs> Brittany Renner. Hide them. Bring them, actually. Miss <laughs> Brittany Renner in the building. Yo, it's good, man. How's it going? How are you? All is truly well. How are you? Listen, we already made a toast that, above all, we're going to tell the truth. So or a synonym for that is, we're going to keep it funky. Keep it funky. Let's get the people what they want to see. OK. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I want, like, just so, just so we can kind of clear the air and no speculations, I created this platform for one reason and one reason only, to get me outside of the demographic of a, of a football player. Mm -hmm. Because you get bottled into that algorithm of just being an athlete. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about macho stuff. You know, what is it like preparing for this? What is it like doing this and doing that? And what was the Patriot way like? Yeah, uh, hey. Hey! Yeah. You know, but this, like, this, this here is just something that, like, what real, I'm, I'm, I'm more relatable as a person, as a parent, than a football player. It's only 32 or 31 other dudes that's like me. When, as a real dude, a black man in America, it's billions of us, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah, that's what, that's what we're gonna do. Are you comfortable? How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I love the setup. The energy's great. Yeah. Um, everyone here on set, I fuck with it. Say less. So let's get right into it. What's the biggest misconception? <laughs> we're just diving right in. That's what we <laughs> yeah, ain't no, ain't no, we ain't dipping no toe in there. Uh, we jumping in there. What's the biggest misconception that you have and like, this is your avenue to say, I don't appreciate this, right? When, when a person sees you, matter of fact, if we're in fellowship, which we are right now, all right, and you walk in, and I want you to think in third person or think into an individual who sees you. Okay. Oh, girl, that's... Britney, bitch. <laughs> Watch out for her. That's what they would say. But why? I feel like people think I'm a gold digger. Mm -hmm. And if I was a gold digger, I wouldn't be a very smart one. Um, they think that I'm just out to manipulate men. Mm -hmm. And I feel like people don't really see I don't know, I'm, I'm just a sm like a small town girl from Mississippi. I'm from Ocean Springs, Mississippi. I just have big old dreams. And I feel like it is, it, it, it does suck to be categorized as those things because money has never moved me. I don't come from money, never had a sugar daddy, don't have a rich family. I really got it out the mud myself. So I feel like to be looked at as a villain, you know, you had said in your, uh, one of your interviews, you know, it was like, they don't ever show the, the childhood pictures of the Joker. Mm. It's like that same thing here. It's like everybody has an opinion about what they see. It's like I had a whole life before this. And the one thing about me that I can say is like my heart has never changed. Mm. Like I believe in love. I'm just like a, a hopeful romantic. And everything I've done has just been on a public platform. So it's like to be seen as a villain or some uh, man eater is like, that's not even who I am. Like I'm a crybaby. You know what I mean? Mm. I'm crying in the car, you know? So I don't know. It's just, it's. It is tough, but you know, it is what it is. And even though you may be like, man, it's just me being me, but bruh. Yeah. It's like the thing that drawn me to making this happen was like, I seen an interview where you checked the dude, by the way, I don't even know him. It needs no re response. Yeah. But it was, I loved how you checked it in a way where you could have easily just stormed out of there and be like, you know what, that's why I don't fuck with y'all, or that's why I don't, you know what I'm saying, fool with y'all in that type of manner. But you, you handled it like a, like a G, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Or as they say it now, you handled it, you're like, you, 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 was, you was giving P. That was, that was P, right? Did I say that right? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. But yeah, but take me, take me through something. I recently seen something uh, where you did something at Jackson State. Yeah, Prime. with Dion. Yo, how, how did that happen? So, first of all, I love, like, I know all of his children. Mm. I'm a big fan of Dion, love what he does. And I used to go to, I went to Jackson State. I'm like, what? Yeah, I did. I used to play soccer okay. there. Come on now, like, let me, let me not try to bring up the glory days. Mm. But 
Um, I played soccer there. I was freshman MVP of the SWAC. We won a SWAC championship. Like, stop playing. So people didn't really know that my history, because again, I had a whole life before social media. Mm. So people didn't really know my background with that. But I played okay. soccer there for two years. And why I actually ended up leaving Jackson State was because I was in love with the quarterback there. No. Oh, it's always a boy, isn't Ooh. it? Uh, I was in love with the quarterback, and when he left school, I left with him and moved to Michigan. But, um, so yeah, so Dion had, I was, I was really trying to get tickets to the homecoming game. That's all I cared about. I was like, I wanna go, I wanna just experience it. When I, playing soccer there, you didn't really get to enjoy like those type of events. Mm -hmm. So Dion was like, no, you need to come speak to my team. And to be honest, like, it made me feel so, seen mm. and heard because he knows like my heart and like how I am. Mm. So to have someone publicly be like, I'm gonna, I don't give a fuck. I'm putting my name on line. He's like, yeah. he's a goat. He's yeah. like, I don't give a fuck what anybody has to yeah. say. Like, I want you to come in and I want you to put them on game. Yeah. So I felt really protected, mm. you know, because of the stuff I was going through publicly and being categorized as a villain and all these horrible things, being a new mother, yeah. you know, your hormones are all over the place. Um, it made me feel really protected. And yeah. I was just like, wow, like this is a real man. You Prime, <laughs> hey, Prime. I, I, you already know I respect, it, it's not a lot of yeah. people that I could just publicly say, bro, I respect you. Yeah. Like I can say this and I'm about to give Prime his role. Just, Deion Sanders is a person that I inspire to be. Yeah. Like, I don't know if he like 50 something, bro. He's swaggy. He is. He's him. And he yeah. got a way where he can articulate himself without cursing. I got to get to that point where I can't curse. Yeah. But he just that smooth dude where he brings culture into their workforce, workspace, and it's dynamic. Yeah. It's like when you when, when an African-American man knows his worth and knows his responsibility to not only protect what represents him, but also try to trailblaze what he's represented mm -hmm. too. It's powerful. Like it I turn is. on the TV and I can't not see him. Like mm. he has really brought so much to Jackson State. Like it's incredible what yeah. he's doing. Yeah. yeah. And still doing it. It's thriving. Yeah. I would hate for him, but I would know it is for all professional reasons and you got to do right what, what his life projects him to do or whatever, but to leave. I know. I would hate for him not to be appreciated in Jackson because what he's doing isn't just for Jackson State, isn't just for the swag. It's it, culture. It's he, culture. He's a table shaker. Like uh, it's crazy. Bruh. bruh. He's just different. All right. So yeah. so while you was there, while you was there, what was the most commonly asked question? While I was at Jackson State? Yeah, well, like when you talked to the, did you talk to the team? I did. I talked to the team. They had questions at the end. Um, I think the one question that stood out in my mind by one of his players was, how do you go about love and relationships moving forward? Like, how are you not jaded? Mm. Um, but to be honest, like his, his boys were like tuned in. Um, they asked really insightful questions. And I felt like they saw me too. Like that was actually the first time I was able to admit kind of, what happened in my relationship and mm. why I had been silent. Um, so I don't know, I think for me it was, it was a, a bunch of different questions that I felt like I was pretty impressed by. Like yeah. they were just really in tune. You know, yeah. and I, did, I didn't know what to expect because I'm like, it's a bunch of young guys. Yeah. I don't even know how you guys view me, you know, mm. whatever. I just didn't know what to expect, but they really impressed me. Like he has a great group of guys down yeah. there. Like he has them all on one accord, like yeah. let's be clear. Yeah. So um, I think the question that stood out was, how do you move forward? But how do you? Like, cause, cause, and, and I tee it up. Let's be honest, you've been in that limelight enough to know you can spot a sucker from a mile away. Okay. You can spot a real person from a mile right. away. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to avoid from using other terminology. Urban, yeah. or other terminology <laughs> that can't go on YouTube. You gotta censor it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I'm filtering my convo, but I'm also, emphasizing like how can you or what gives you the notion to rank the type of man that you come in contact with on a day to day and what makes you respect them if I can be completely transparent Let's I go. feel like ever since I put out my book in 2018 there was definitely a decline in interest like DM wise um, and I think now because I've been painted as such a villain and I leaned into that role, there are a lot of men that fear me. Like I'll see them in my story views, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it's like, nobody's really going out of their way to pursue me. 
I think it's really different being a woman in that situation versus like my baby daddy, you know? Women will flock to him and not think twice of it. But to me, because I use my mouth, because I am on platforms, because I tell the truth, Mm -hmm. a lot of men want to steer clear of that. So dating and like where it is now, there's not a lot of people that are like, hey, I'm interested by the way. Mm -hmm. And you would think like guys are horny, at least they want to fuck, right? No, it's like, it's really, Sahara Desert in this bitch. <laughs> like, in my prom, I used to wake up to like, a, you know, a bunch of good morning texts. It's mm-hmm. like now, it's just me. Mm. And I feel like at this point in my life, that's what I need yeah. because I've always put men and love before me. And it's like now, I have no choice but to like sit down and like, where am I going? Like, who is Brittany Renner? Like, what makes me happy? Uh-huh. You know? So there's not a lot of guys. <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> me. All right, look. But can you blame them though? And let's let's, keep it, let's keep it funky now. Okay, okay, okay. Let's keep it funky. Like blame them for I'm, what? I'm, I'm Cam Newton, right? Okay. And I ain't gonna lie. I'm not about to hit no DM with no Britney talking about, hey, yo, what's good? What's popping? Where you at? You in Atlanta? I see you in Atlanta. Boom, why slide not? through. But why not? Because I don't want to end up in your book. Because in a lot of ways, real real spill. I felt like you had to do what's best for you, and you did and you capitalize mm-hmm. on it. But that was, to, that was to the discretion of somebody else. You know what I'm saying? And whether you felt like that was what you needed to do to get on, I'm saying that from a, from a person in my seat, it's like, damn, she pretty, bad, gorgeous, well represented, but I gotta walk lightly. Because she ain't just like no other Instagram model that's out there because she really knows she could talk the talk, right? And when she goes and talks to a Jackson State, when she goes and talks to podcast Hollywood Unlocked, Shade Room, yeah. she ain't just, oh, Cam was cool. Oh, yeah, I did it. But she giving details. Man, listen, man, I popped in, so and so, so and so. Matter of fact, and man, look, y'all, he had the nerve to. <laughs> And you know, an innocence where I'm just like, bro, I just want to reach out to you just to have a good time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like my time is being respected and protected. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. you do have that platform or your resume says differently. Okay, so there's a, that's a lot to unpack, but I'm gonna start with the first question is, did you read my book? Spark notes. <laughs> I heard about it. You can't make this. Okay, so you spark noted my book. Mm-hmm. Okay. I know who you named. You do, because I didn't name anyone in my book. Bullshit. No, I didn't. I did not. Man, what? I didn't name anyone, because you know what's so funny that you say that? Mm-hmm. Because of where we are in media today, mm-hmm. again, just, just being in tune with what's going on. I never had to name anyone. I read Superhead's book in high school, loved it. She named motherfuckers, this, got a, this motherfucker got a six inch, this is that, I put, uh, you know, dildo in his yeah, ass. Yeah, yeah. Right, I don't have to do that. I don't even have to put myself in a position where I have to go to court because you guys have already reported on so many things. Mm-hmm. All I do is just make the title just a little bit to yeah. where if you, hmm, Dancing with the Devil, song, uh, Soul Tied with the Songbird, Flag on the Play, who could she be talking about? I never named anybody. So I think it's really interesting Mm-hmm. That you're saying, steer clear of Brittany Runner. You know, she's gonna put you in a book. Nigga, I, I'm sorry, I say, nigga. <laughs> I never named anybody. Like, yeah. I never, and there was, there has not been one list that I've read online that had all seven guys correct. Mm. But I just let y'all run with it because y'all gonna make me my money. Y'all okay. gonna push my book. So, so clear the so, air, so clear the air right now. now I, okay, when you look at, when you just said, when you look at the list of people that was kind of hinted in your book, mm, nobody got them right. Nobody. Yeah, not all cool. seven, though. No. Right. There was just some people that people were naturally not going to know because mm-hmm. you don't know everything about my life. But for the most part, a lot of those relationships were kind of public, so people put two and two together. Right. But no, that's not my style. Like, I've never posted screenshots. I've never outed anybody. No. Like, I've never put names in my book. So it's like, for you to say, oh, you know, you steer clear of girls like that, cause she's gonna give detail. It's like, dude, I didn't even name anybody. I could have, and you guys wouldn't have taken me to court and won shit. But what's the, what's the chick name? Oh, the, so in essence, and, and I'm keeping it funky. I'm keeping it a lima Keep bean, a butt, which like people would shot. say, 
tell her cheers. <laughs> fucking cheers to the truth and you know getting rid of all these fucking assumptions. Mm -hmm. I may need some more wine, though. I ain't gonna lie to you. I need some more based on this conversation. I'm like, not me naming people. I never fucking named anybody. That's cool, but that's, that's, that's my assumption. ignorance. You, when you my assume, ignorance. When you assume, you, you make, make an ass, ass of you and me. Yeah. Yeah. I know it. So that's crazy that you still did that. But I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm telling you, I never read your book. But if I were to go to my home, if I open my phone up right now and I go to a, a group chat and I say, hey, bro, guess who I'm talking to right now? Boom. It's gonna be negative. I ain't gonna lie and to you. And the niggas would still fuck. I swear they will. And if I gave them the time of day, for real, stop. You fall in love. Stop playing. I don't, I don't care. You know, like, oh, I would never wife her. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You don't know me. You've never met me. Mm. You don't know how I am behind closed doors. Right. So yeah, y'all all sit there and, and kiki, 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 do all that dumb ass shit in group chat. But when it comes to when we on this out here on this blacktop and face to face, yeah. you're not you're not talking talking about she's some whore. She's nobody I would take seriously. So you respect me. Mm -mm. Just like I came here by myself. Mm. No security. No. Nah. In Atlanta. Uh. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. So fuck the group chat. Lead into my next question. Who do you represent? Um, I would say that I represent people who are ashamed to live in their truth. Mm. And I feel like my actions and just walking the walk, I feel like it's for those girls who feel like they don't have a voice, for girls that can relate to me, that are afraid of the backlash. Because the reality is, is me going out here and being myself, you see me publicly being crucified. You see me publicly being burned at the stake. This is what happens when you tell the truth. Yeah. And, it's, and it's supposed to scare other women into submission. Maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe I shouldn't do that. I should live my life in fear. Because, oh my God, what are people going to say if they don't want to marry me, right? But bitch, I'm standing on all 10 every time. Every time. And be like, wow, like, this girl doesn't give a fuck. I do the same shit she does. She just talks about it. She's like a voice for me. So I don't even really categorize it as even male or female. It's just about standing on principle, standing for what you believe in, and just accepting it how it comes. That's like my biggest thing. I'm not asking for anybody to understand me. I don't care if you don't. I'm not gonna sit here and try to translate my soul for the world every interview. I'm gonna yeah. get what I can get out of it, but it's like, this is who I am. I'm gonna walk the walk, and I, I encourage more people to live in their truth, because right. if it can be destroyed by the truth, then it should be destroyed by the truth. And if that means people think I'm a, a, the Wicked Witch of the West because of how I move and the way I speak, that's just a jacket I'm gonna have to wear. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it's better to just live in your truth and be honest or to be hated, you know, for whatever people think you are, than to pretend or to lie or to shrink myself. So it's just like, it is what it is. Right, so, so I think we just answered a question about how does men, like, view you? I'm curious to know the what the chicks got like. What you think a, a, a average chick got to say about, about you? About me? Right. Uh, I feel like it goes one of two ways. I love how outspoken you are. That bitch is annoying. I think it's mm. just like one of two things. I've met people, I say more recently, that are like, I love that you stand your ground. Yeah. You know, but I think it's, it's really that. Like, nobody under this umbrella where it's like, you're beautiful, you have a following, you have a voice. There's a lot of girls who have Instagram followings, but they're not fucking talking. You don't even know what their voice sounds like. Mm. So to just even speak, let alone speak truth, yeah. it's unheard of. I'm not doing anything spectacular, but in a realm of you know, frauds, fake, frauds fake. and followers, right. Bitch, I'm the motherfucking Jesus. You the you know? go. <laughs> like, it's like, wow, she's just, you know? So, I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't when know. When it's all said and done, five years to eight years from now, where do you see Britney Renner? What, what you represent, what, like, what's your, what's your demographic? You know what I'm saying? What's my demographic and what I represent? I yeah. mean, I think, well, five to eight years, that's anything can change. Mm -hmm. You know, moment to moment, I think day to day even is too far ahead. But um, I would say that my biggest thing is I want, I want to encourage people to think for themselves, right. question everything, and to live in your truth, whatever that is. That's really all my message is about. In any video that I post, any interview I do, it's the same story. My story doesn't change because it's just one truth. So I think that's what my biggest message is, is in five to eight years, using my voice, using my platform, and getting people to just think for themselves and be whoever the fuck you really are. Yeah. Just be yourself. Yeah. So my question now is, what's your type? I don't have a type. I ain't got no type. Hey. I don't have a type. That's a lie. That's a lie. We all got types. Well, I feel like preference. I got... What's your preference? 
I mean, I would probably say someone taller than me. I hate mm -hmm. to be shallow, but the fuck, it's what I want. Um, someone that takes care of themselves mentally, physically, someone who's in the gym. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't even say that has like a, a, a label to it, like, oh, it's athlete, or oh, it's rapper, or oh, it's mm -hmm. corporate America, or whatever. I just kind of feel like, I don't really fucking know. I feel like I, I've been single since July, um, and, I've, and I'm like, where am I really supposed to go from here? Because it just is like my type and all these other things, all these other factors, all these things that I thought were important. I'm like, who cares if you're fucking over six foot? If mm -hmm. you're a fucking asshole, you're an asshole, right? right? So it's like, I don't, can't really say like, I have a type or a preference. Like I have someone who fucking prefers me, someone mm -hmm. that prefers to be honest, someone that prefers to show me what they're capable of versus, you know, I think he'll maybe, he'll change one day. Someone who's, who prefers to just be who they are. Could you date a regular guy with no Instagram or less followers without a blue check than you? I've done that already. Mm. That's what I'm saying. I've, I've really, I've worn a few hats. Like mm. the guy who nobody fucking knows. I've dated a lawyer. I've dated rappers, athletes, whoever, you know? And I'm like, okay, so where do I go from here? Cause it's like, people say date down or to date someone who doesn't have this, but I'm like, I've already done that. I've already done that. So the answer is not about who I would date. It's just, I feel like it's more so like, who is willing to step up to the plate? Because real is real. Right. Whether you are a nine to five or whether you're a lawyer, whether you're a rapper, whoever. Can you expand on step up to the plate for what? Step up to the plate meaning, although I feel like what I do is not different than like what you do. Mm -hmm. Because let's be quite frank here. You said you have seven kids, mm -hmm. multiple baby mamas. I have one kid, mm -hmm. one baby daddy. People look at me as damaged goods. We're not even factoring in the perception of social media mm -hmm. because that's already a lot with just having a kid. Then you're adding, oh, she's social media, Instagram famous. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's dated these types of guys. Oh, she wrote a book? Not a book. I mean, <laughs> Who is going to step up? You got to be a fucking unicorn, it feels like, at this point, to take on the challenge of, like, I don't give a fuck who calls me a simp. I love Brittany Renner for her. Mm. And I don't know what that guy looks like, and I honestly cannot stress. Like, I can't worry about if he's over six foot or if he fucking plays a sport or not. I don't fucking know. Because at, at this point, me being me and seeing the options that are laid out, I'm like, <laughs> it's slim. It's low. It's slow, it's, it's, it's dry season, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie, and like I said, since my book, I feel like it's taken a big decline, you know, and you explain that to me. Right. So it's like, I don't know what my type is. I like real, I like honest, I like committed, I like someone who's just gonna tell me what it is and, and just let me know what I'm signing up for as yeah. opposed to bamboozling me. So it's just like, mm, I don't know. I don't know what that guy looks like. I asked this question to my friends. To I asked this question to my friends a lot, and I really, I, I really want to hear from a, a woman of your, your status to. Who is the who is the couple of the of the culture, that you would be like if I got to do or when that day I get to do I I want to I want to have these type of qualities, that they present. Not to say that, you know, they don't have any flaws or they're just perfect, or they, they're, they're not able to kind of voice their opinions. But who do you see in a relationship that you say, you know what, oh, that's cute, I like that. I wanna, I wanna imply that or apply those things when I, when I have a man one day. Sierra and Russell Wilson. What? Sierra and Russell Wilson. Explain. First of all, I don't know them personally. Mm -hmm. I mean, they could both be cheating on each other and we don't know, but the Instagram, Instagram pictures and videos are adorable. Um, I feel like, if we're just being frank, yeah. to have a baby daddy like Future, and then a man come in and accept you and love you and treat you as you should have been treated when you were with him, mm -hmm. step up to the plate and literally treat you like an actual goddess, mm. that to me is ideal. That to me is more so of a realistic comparison because it's like, okay, maybe my baby does not Future, but I still have a baby daddy by an NBA player. Mm -hmm you know, a certain type of guy is gonna wanna have to step up and be secure in even fulfilling that role. Let alone, like I said, you know, being the stepdad of someone else's kid. Yeah. So I feel like their relationship to me is more so goals because it's like, 
this guy Future who's out here running rampant with girls who are 20 years old Hold and nobody do you wants know, to talk. Do you know him? I don't know Future. Okay, so you can't, you can't. I but we know you, who he is. I ain't going to let you go at my dog now. Okay, okay, okay. I ain't going to let you, Atlanta. I ain't going to let you do Atlanta. that. He's Atlanta, you're right, yeah. right, right, right. He a well, dog right here now. Listen, Shit, you bought some well, Future listen, in that listen. thing. Go, go. So, okay. But, but the reality is, is he's dated girls who are like 20 years old. Okay. Okay, and he's like 40. Nothing wrong with that, but you know, I was crucified for a six year age gap between me and my baby daddy. So anyways, different, different people, different yeah. rules, that's cool. But I feel like Future had Sierra and didn't obviously see her value. And not even that, didn't see the value within himself, which is why you couldn't see the value in her. So I think like- Why are you, why are you, I feel like you're coming at a, at, at a lane where, why didn't Sierra see the value in Future? I'm, it seems, and I'm just playing devil's advocate. I, I, I think that's a fair point. I mean, we don't know where either one of them were, which mm -hmm. is why I said that illusion of what they, Sierra and Russell have created is considered goals. We have no idea what goes on in their household. We don't know who sacrificed what to get where, what conversations were had. And we don't even know if, hey, you know, maybe Future was like, you're trying to make me into something I'm not. I'm just standing up for myself. It's not going to work. Like. I mean, the reality is we don't fucking know anything. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just answering based on the outside looking in. Right. I'm not I'm not here to paint Future as some bad guy. I don't right. know him. I, I never see that. Yeah, that. I just, I guess I feel like too, it can be somewhat triggering when you're like, okay, you're 40 something and then you're dealing with a 20 year old. Like how serious are you really? Not that love has, a, and there's like an age difference. Mm -hmm. Like there has to be a specific age gap, but it's just like, what are you doing though? Because you do have a bunch of baby mamas. Like you are kind of just out here all willy nilly. So where is your end goal? But you can say that but, about me too. I feel like when you, you say have, bunch, you have two baby mamas, right? I got two, right? It's not that many. And I still love them dearly. But I'm I'm ready for them to move on because yeah. I'm moving on. You see what I'm saying? And I say that with all respect. There is nothing that either one of my baby mamas can do or say that I'd never be there for. If she called yeah. me right now, either one of them call me right now, I'm going to be there like, listen, boom. We ain't got to be sleeping together for me to care and right, love right. you dearly. And I think that's the thing that people got it messed up. You know what I'm saying? And anybody who I'm dealing with, they have to know to that. It, they, she's still the mother of my kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if she says she need me to be to this extreme, if it's all respect of the situation that I'm in or is going to be in, yeah. I need to be that yeah. because... My kid, my biological kids aren't old enough for me to ask those questions like, Dad, what happened? Right. I, and my older kids, who I receive as my biological children, because I love them the same, they don't get nothing any different that my biological kids don't get or do get. Right. They're approaching that age where it's like, okay, what happened? Mm. And that's the person who I am preparing myself to be to say, you know what, Jaden, I call him China, and Shakira, I call her Kiri, and I'm like, let's talk about it. But I'm not gonna have that conversation with you at 10 years old, you right. don't know. I'm really not gonna have that conversation with you at 14 and 15, because your mental understanding, you ain't lived long enough. I done been 14, 15, 16, 17, yeah. all the way up, right? I'm 32. So you telling me what you, what you think is cool now, I already done lived it, done it, and got a ribbon for it. Yeah. So. I think for me where I'm at, I'm, I'm very aware of what my situation is with how people may view you or view me because like I told you when we was off camera, it's like I got seven children that I'm proud of. And guess what? I want some more. Yeah. I, I love my children. I, I, think, I think for me, there's times and I've been public about it where I miss so much of my children that gives me my my want to. That gives me I need to. Yeah. That gives me something that I know. When we're in this establishment right now, it makes me more prideful to say that, not the money that I make from it, it's able to say, man, when, when Jaden gets or when Shakira gets a certain age, they're going to start working here and start understanding that they don't have to work for nobody. Right. And this can be yours if I deem you're prepared to take it on wholeheartedly. Yeah. So, you know, with that being said, I think a lot of people in the media can be skewed a lot because they may not know, right? Yeah. And whether it was Sierra saying to Future, and we're just using them as an example, yeah. cameras, it's Sierra saying to Future, I don't like the person that you're making me or your standards isn't 
becoming of who I am, or a future just saying, you know what, we don't know who dumped who. We you see what I'm saying? We don't know anything. Whether he had that conversation and said, you know what, I don't, I, don't, I don't like who I'm becoming. This ain't working. And we just gonna respectfully oblige okay. or re just, just go apart. I respect, matter of fact, we don't even know if I'm pretty sure they've had an encounter. What was that conversation with Future and Russell Wilson? What that looked like? Yeah, and when did it happen? You know what I'm saying? How often does lot. it happen? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They may have a great conversation, they have a great communication And they may not have had a conversation at all, which is also another thing. That or, happened. but you don't think, like, like this person that we paint to social media or to the media is one thing. But clearly, I'm talking to the, the, the woman, the myth, the legend right now, and I can tell you I'm blown away just off of our interaction right here alone because when we met first, what, how, how many years ago was it? It was, I don't know, like at least five, right? At least. At least. You're a different person, You're I'm a different, a different person. person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that arrogant person, you know, whether he's still in me or not, I just present it in a different type of way, you know? So in my mind, if I'm a viewer and I'm like, okay, Kim has a lot of kids, where's the ring? Like, mm. why didn't you marry her? Like, I'm, con I'm confused why, because as a baby mama myself, I'm yeah. just, let me just put myself in that shoes, it's like, why would you give me a forever commitment, which is a child, versus like, where's my ring? Um, honestly, that's a great question. And it's kind of moving me, cause ooh, I just got hot, you feel me? <laughs> but. The thing is, that person that I was while we were having children together, I couldn't be the best husband. I wasn't prepared to be a husband then. Okay. And the, the hourglass was shrinking for her. And I pride myself on doing this. When me and uh, her was together, Kia, that is, we were both young. There wasn't nothing still, and I say this respectfully, there's still nothing that I would never do for her. Right. But at the same time, the person that she was when I met her, it wasn't the person that she was when I left her. When I met, when I met Kia, and I say this protecting her too, she wasn't, she didn't, she didn't know, you know, she wasn't the one to be like, I wanna get married, I want this, I want that. Right. And I was more so the person that, man, my parents been together for 36 years. So I know what marriage looks like. Mm -hmm. The ups, the downs, the trials and tribulations. My dad is a preacher, fa uh, father's a bishop. Hallelujah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and my mom is, only, only thing she knows is number one, church, and the only thing that she knows is my dad, right? So that's all. So I know what it, 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 a woman looks like, a submissive woman that's very strong and independent, what she stands for. Okay. And I seen Kia, really evolving into a woman that her standards was like, I ain't just no chick. Baby mama. I ain't just no baby mama, right? And when she kept putting pressure on me, I was like, oh, I don't know if this is what I really want. You know what I'm saying? So selfishly, I was like, all right, well, I'm gonna do this for, you know, that I'm trying to get myself together. And I was in Temptation Island, yeah. a football player, young, no is not even in my vocabulary or no is not in the vocabulary of people that's serving or doing or benefiting me or the beneficiaries. And I just find myself in this downward spiral. Yeah. And did she deserve better? I will humbly say yes, yeah. she did. And the person that comes into her life and says, you know what, I will accept you for everything, for kids and all, that day's gonna come. And I would just hope that they respect that I'm a hands-on dad first, you feel me? So you're gonna have to see me. At some point. At some point, <laughs> you feel me? Because number one, I still hold some type of contempt to be able to discern for her, I believe, just like she has a right to discern the day when I say, I'm taking somebody serious and I want them to meet our children. So she still has to say, oh, uh-uh, I don't want her around mm. our kids, right? Mm. And I will respect that, but at the same time, the, going back to the person that she was becoming, I was falling deeper into my own selfishness and realizing that I gotta be better. I hope you, I hope you have the patience, which she did, 
And she was around me through a lot of success, a lot of downfalls, and I respect her for that to this day. But it never led to the ultimate commitment, and that's a ring. And to, to me, it's not even an apology that's needed. It's just like we just grew apart, right? Mm -hmm. And we have a great working relationship now where we have beautiful children, and we're seeing them grow day in and day out. She does a great job with them and her supporting cast. And it's just like now, here I am, I'm trying to still get my feet to finding that perfect person that can come into my life to accept me, just like she's, ex you know, wants somebody to accept her. Mm -hmm. And obviously my other baby mama to somebody to accept her and knowing that the pressure for me is easy, right? I'm the beneficiary to, this is what I'm, this is what I got. Yeah. Like, everybody got luggage. It's different for you as a man. Though. Of course. Yeah. You're not seen as damaged goods. Of course. Someone with four kids or even one kid is like, God, I'm taking on a lot. Mm -hmm. It's not that though, but you kind of get a little bit of a pass too because you're Cam Newton. Like mm -hmm. a lot of people will just flock just off of the clout. The clout, like the opportunity, like fuck yeah, I'll be one of 12, you know, mm -hmm. give a fuck bitch, you know? So I think your reality is a lot different than theirs. And I know that. Yeah, I appreciate your honesty though, because yeah. I, I didn't expect you to be that honest. Because wow. I mean, I, my thing is I always wanted to know, because I'm like, how the fuck, you know, again, like being a baby mom, I'm like, how the fuck do you have all these kids and it's like, you don't want to put a ring on it. But like you said, you either, you know, it's like you grow together, you grow apart. It's really that simple. But I ask you this too. Are your parents still together? My parents were never together. So you're coming from that background. Right. How are you going to brace yourself or prepare yourself to go into something that you don't even have a great figure to mimic? I mean, I don't feel like you need a figure to mimic to be able to emulate it. So I think for me, I've always, I've always really wanted, you know, one man, family household, that's it. That's why I left college at Jackson State after two, you know, a year and a half. That's why I just recently moved from Los Angeles, California to Charlotte, North Carolina to be with my baby daddy. So it's like, I feel like for me, just because I've never seen it, doesn't mean I never had the vision of it. So I, I don't know, I just kind of feel like it's just something that is instilled in me where it's, I do believe in love, Maybe I've never seen it, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist and doesn't mean I can't have it. I don't, I don't need to see it to see it modeled to want to do it. But I'm going to call a cap on that. I'm going to call Why? a big lie because this is what I do know. When things get tough. Okay. When trials and tribulations does come. Life. You need somebody who's walking the walk rather than just talking the talk. That you say, okay. girl, you know what? Man, I just caught this dude texting another girl. I'm ready to leave, girl. Like, tell me something that's gonna get me from jumping off this edge because Lamar ass, I'm sick of his ass, I'm sick of his shit. Yeah. But if you don't have nobody to be like, girl, I had to say, I had to do the same thing with Chase. Me and us, we, we've been married for X amount of years and it's tough, but it's worth it. Mm. Because beauty is in the struggle. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm, I don't think so. I'm sorry. I, I can't okay. sit here through this. Um, and I am going to answer this question before I have to use the bathroom because I had too much to drink. Not too much to drink, but just enough. Um, that's bullshit. Because in reality, if your baby mama was doing that dumbass shit to you and, and accidentally slipping and sliding and sitting on dicks, that's not an accident. It is a planned choice that she decided to entertain, whether that's text message, whether that's sex, whether that's whatever, that's bullshit. That's where I'm like, this is bullshit. What I'm saying, no man would accept. Women stay, oh, I got cheated on. I mean, I guess that's what comes with this lifestyle. At least I got his back. Fuck that, fuck that. You guys wouldn't even say if a woman, if your baby mom, Kia, mm -hmm. if she was fucking other niggas, you would not accept that, bitch, bye bye. I'll talk to you later. I'm gonna holler at you. Bitch, I'm gonna pay you some child support. Take me to court, bitch. Cause I don't want even pay you. Can I ask you a question? Fuck out of here. That's I, bullshit. Can I ask you That's a crazy. You're right. That's fucking great. I'm gonna take fucking heels off of this. But, I'm gonna fight. Yeah, let me ask you this. <laughs> Honestly, keep it funky. What? Have you ever cheated? When I was 16 years old. But the guy that, that you were dealing with or in your adult life that you were dating, whether public or not, have you ever cheated? When I was 16 years old, I'll tell story time. My first boyfriend, 
I kissed another guy. Three days later, mind you, he's off on some camping trip, not even talking to me. Three days later, he calls me. I got you this spray painted T-shirt. I got you this bracelet. No. I know, it's so cute. <laughs> you call me. I'm like, by the way, I have to tell you because I can't fucking lie. Mm -hmm. I kissed someone else and we broke up. And at that moment, at 16 years old, I was like, I could never do this to somebody. I would rather, and I remember saying, I'd rather get my heart broken a hundred times over. I shouldn't have said that. A hundred times over than to be the person that like cheats and fucks it all up. Mm. Because living with that regret hurts so much more than just giving it your all and seeing what happens. And if you get shit on, you get shit on. So at 16, that was the first and last time I ever cheated on a guy. Cause I just knew right then. All right. so. I'm gonna keep it a fuck. I'm gonna keep it a butt with you. I'm gonna keep it fucking keep with it, you. Keep it funky. The person that I am, the caliber of guy that I am, and I speak for the masses, I'm usually a guy that women cheat on with. So with me being the cheatee, the person that the girl is cheating on with. It skewed my mind. Yeah, because you're like, no woman is faithful. Hello. Yeah. And y'all, y'all cheat at a different rate. Than well, no, 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 Take it to the grave now. No, no, no. The di the difference is, is that I feel like when women cheat, there's a lot, there's a lot of thought that's into it. But a lot of, the, a lot of times, very seldomly, our guys on the same wavelength. We're like, oh, I'm into you. I'm focused on you. So even like, you're not even hypersensitive or hyper aware to what's really going on. So it's easier to cheat on guys because you're not fucking paying attention. The little things are the big things, and the little things often go unnoticed. Mm. So that's why I feel like it's not that women are better at cheating, it's men don't fucking pay attention. Mm. Mm. Listen. On that note, I can use the bathroom. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. So we listen, look, we got some tea. This sounds like we need a part two. We you did. feel what I'm saying? We got That'll my change. dog, Brittany yeah. Renner here. As we, as we close things out at Funky Friday, we're gonna look at that camera right there and we're gonna do it together. One finger. He said not to pay attention to you. One finger. One pinky. One thumb. Oh. One, One love. love.